Good morning students. Welcome to our lesson for today. In this lesson, we will find probabilities based on equally likely outcomes in practical context. We'll be using the keywords at random, which means choosing without any preference. So what does it mean when we say outcomes are equally likely or not equally likely? When outcomes have the same probability of success, then they are said to be equally likely. Some examples, a fair coin, fair dice, and counters of the same shape and sizes. Now the fair coin, if you toss it, the two outcomes, head or tails, are said to be equally likely because no side of the coin is heavier than the other. Same with the dice. The fair dice have equal faces, no side is heavier, so when you roll the dice, all faces are equally likely to come out. The counters with the same shape and sizes. If you are not looking, you will not be able to identify the colors, so you cannot choose uh, according to color. You will be choosing one at random without looking, then we say that all counters have equally likely chance to be chosen. Outcomes are unequally likely if the probability of success are not equal. So for example, two coins are not of the same size, matchbox of unequal faces, and the weather. For these two coins, the probability of choosing the bigger coin and the smaller coin are not equal because if you choose one at random, you can be choosing according to size. The matchbox, if it is rolled, it is very likely that it will land on the big face. So not all faces are equally likely. The everyday weather changes, but the type of weather are not equally likely. Because if it is summer, it is very likely that you get a sunny day and not a cold day. Let's look at this example. A computer generates a two-digit random number. It can be any number drawn from 00 to 99. Find the probability that it is 99, it is not 99, it has no 9 in it, or it has at least one 9 in it. So let's recall. That to get the probability of an outcome, we divide the desired outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. So for this example, we will use the number square to identify how many total outcomes are there. So from the numbers 1 to 99 and 0, because 0, 0 is included, so we can see that there is a total of 100 numbers. That's our sample space. So that will be our total outcomes that becomes our denominator or divisor in our probabilities. So we will find the probability that the number is 99. If we look at the number square, we only have one 99 in it. So that means it is one out of a hundred number. So that would be 0 0.01 or one out of 100. For the probability that it is not 99, if there is one 99, then the remaining 99 numbers are not 99. Or we can just say it is the complement. So P, probability of not 99, is 1 minus the probability of the number being 99. So 1 minus 0 0.01, which is 0 0.99. Or 99 over 100 because we know that the remaining 99 numbers is not the number 99. So what is the probability that it has no 9 in it? So let's shade on this square grid the numbers with a 9. So from 99 going up to 91 and 90, they all have a 9. Also with 89, 79, 69, 59 out of, out, up to 0, 9. They have 9 in them. So if we see here, 
There are 99 numbers that have 9 in them and 81 numbers do not have 9 in them. So what is the probability that it has no 9 in it? So that's how many numbers that have no 9. So that's 81 numbers out of 100. So it is 0 0.81. And what is the probability that it has at least one 9? So those are the numbers 9, 19, 29, 39, 49, up to 99, 90. Okay, so how many numbers are there? 19 numbers have at least one 9 in them. So that's 19 out of 100 or 0 0.19. Now you can copy this on your notebook for reference. Pause this video and come back when you're ready for the next example. Solve this problem on your notebook. Pause this video and come back when you are done to check your work. Let's check your work. When Razi throws two coins, there are four equally likely outcomes. You can see them in the box. Either he can get two heads, two tails. First coin is head and the second is tail. Or first coin is tail and the second is head. So that's four equally likely outcomes. So let's find the probability that Razi rolls two heads. So again, probability is desired outcomes divided by total outcomes. So as we see in the box, there are four different outcomes. So that will be our divisor or the denominator. So let's identify how many are two heads. And we see this is the only outcome that has two heads. So that's only one out of four. So the probability of having two heads is one fourth or 0 0.25. Next, the probability that Razi will, will roll one head and one tail. So looking at our outcomes, we have these two outcomes, either the first coin is head and the second is tail or the first coin is tail and the second is head. So that's two possible outcomes out of four outcomes. So two over four or one half or 0 0.5. The last one, the probability that it has two tails. So if you look at our list again, there's only one outcomes giving two tails. So that's only one out of four or one fourth or again 0 0.25. Now, check your work, make sure that it is correct, and then come back when you're ready for the next example. Solve this problem on your notebook. Pause this video and come back when you are done to check your work. Let's check your work. Sasha tosses three coins together. Explain why there are eight equally likely outcomes. Find the probability that there will be three heads, three tails, two heads and one tail, two tails and one head. Now when you are explaining, it will be good to use diagrams, tables, or show your calculations. So for this question, we will list all the possible outcomes using a table. And then find the probabilities Using again, probability is desired outcomes divided by total number of outcomes. So let's list the total possible outcomes when Sasha tosses three coins together. So we will have three coins. One possible outcome is that first coin is head, second coin is head, and third coin is also head. So that's one outcome, head, head, head or you can list it as HHH. Another possibility is when coin one is head, coin two is head, and coin three is tail. So that's head, head, tail, or HHT. Or another one, when coin one is head, coin two is tail, and coin three is also tail. So that's head, tail, tail. Another one, coin one is still head, Coin 2 is still tail, and coin 3 is now head. So, head, tail, head, H, T, H. Our possibility, if coin 1 now is tail, coin 2 is head, 
and point 3 is head. So that's tail, head, head. Or point 1 is tail, point 2 is head, and point 3 is tail. Point 1 is tail, point 2 is tail, point 3 is tail. Or point 1 is tail, point 2 is tail, and point 3 is head. So those are all the possible outcomes. So if we count, there are 8. So one outcome, one row. So that's a total of 8 rows. Now let's find the probabilities of 3 heads. Let's take a look at our list. There's only one outcome that gives three heads together, H, H, H. So that's one out of eight or one eight. What is the probability of three tails? So in our list, this is the only outcome with three tails. Tail, tail, tail. So that's another one out of eight or one eight. What is the probability that we have two heads and one tail in any order? So these are three possibilities. Head, head, tail. Head, tail, head. Or tail, head, head. So that's three out of eight or three eight. What is the probability that there are two tails and one head? So on our list, there are three of them either head tail 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 head tail or tail tail head so that's three out of eight or three eight